Hi guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today I have an unboxing and review video for you. The folks at Van Goa sent me a five string open back banjo to review. So let's check it out. Okay, I've got it open now. Put that box down. Oh, I see you have a couple things here. Of course, here's the banjo in a gig bag. And it also has a whole bag of accessories. We can come back and look at those after we, uh, we check out the instrument. Well, first of all, uh, you can see here that this thing comes in a, a gig bag that is made to fit. And I was checking out the stats on this on the webpage and it's described as um, being made of like an Oxford material and it reportedly has 10 millimeters worth of padding on it. All right, and so let's open this up. Because when I saw the pictures on the website, this gig bag reportedly opens up all the way, which is nice because it's easy to get to the instrument. And there you go. And it does in fact open up all the way. And it looks like it has a retaining strap here to help keep it in place. Take that out. Set it down. And let's go ahead and look at the bag. Oh, nice. You can see that in addition to having that strap, it has this little uh, rest here to kind of keep the headstock or the neck seated to help protect the headstock, keep it from rolling around. It has a smoother material inside, a coarser material on the outside, and it does appear to have about 10 millimeters, millimeters worth of th uh, padding on it. And it has a pocket here. I'm not sure if all of those accessories will fit in there. Um, looks like pretty close to that. Yeah, my guess is, yeah, there you go. So all the accessories that come with the instrument will in fact fit inside the, uh, the gig bag. So let's go ahead and look at the instrument now. You can see here it comes in the typical sort of uh, soft packing material. And you can see that they have the, uh, the saddle or bridge, whichever, uh, basically uh, rubber banded right to the headstock. And we'll set that there for setup. And we'll take this off. And again, from the picture of this, it looked like it is, in fact, maple all the way around. And it sure looks to be that. And here you can see the headstock. It has a laser etched Van Gogh logo there on the headstock. And we'll take that off. And you can see it has uh, the strings wrapped in paper. And I see they also have a positioning guide right here to help you set up where the bridge is supposed to go. So let's take those off. Even without a positioning guide, it's pretty straightforward about setting up uh, the, uh, the saddle on a banjo. Basically what you do is you find out how far it is from the nut to the 12th fret, and then you have that same measurement from the 12th fret, uh, down to the sound head, and that's where you place your saddle. So, and again, there we have that string guide to help you do just that. So let's go ahead and take that off, and you can see this is made of a clear plastic, but it does have the Van Gogh logo on it. It shows where the 12th fret should be. I hope you can see that, and it also shows here where you put the bridge. So, that is pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and take a look at the whole instrument. As I said, the, uh, the headstock here, you can see is a fairly traditional shape with a laser etched Van Gogh logo. You can see it does have a truss rod cover. So this does have a truss rod. On the back side of the headstock, uh, you can see it has these closed gear tuners. And I should say that uh, this looks to be a, um, this does have a scarf joint at it right here in the headstock. And I think you can just make out that line from the slight difference in color. But again, that's, that the scar joint is in the headstock, which means it's gonna have a good strong neck. This neck, as you can see, is made out of maple. In addition to that scarf joint, it does have a joint down here at the heel. 
and you can see this has a bound fretboard and the fretboard looks to be maple but from looking at the nomenclature on this online the fretboard is described as a laminate so i'm not sure what it is laminated with but you can certainly see that it has a nice look of maple on the top along with these interestingly shaped sort of uh, position markers here at the usual positions and again it is apparently bound in a dark material and also you can see it has position markers here on the side on the player side as well as on the face now this particular banjo comes in uh, two different versions one is with a frosted uh, sound head and the other is with what they call a renaissance sound head which is a slightly darker color like an aged sort of color to it and you can see that uh, these uh, come with Remo uh, sound heads. The body on this, you can see, is also um, a laminate uh, maple. All right, and here's the coordinator rod inside. And it has the typical kind of hardware that comes with this. And interestingly, it has these, uh, or at least on this side, it has this hook which I believe is intended for attaching the, the, uh, the shoulder strap. Because a lot of times you see people just attaching these to the hardware, but they have the, the, um, these little um, hooks here, not hooks, but these little uh, sort of uh, delta rings in order to attach the, the, uh, the sling, which I think is pretty neat. Also, you can see this does come with sort of a chromed kind of a, uh, an armrest, and it is covered with plastic right now to protect it. And the tailpiece, you can see also is covered with a plastic for protection. Right. And oh, interesting, I just noticed that. And also you can see it has that trim on the lower part of, that, uh, of the sound ring or the hoop. Okay, so at first glance here, this looks like a pretty nice instrument. Let me look down the neck. All right, and let's see here. Yeah, th that neck looks arrow straight, so that's a good place to be. Well, at first glance here, um, I could say that from looking at this, it has sort of a, a satin finish on the neck, and um, it's not real super sticky, which is nice because sometimes high gloss ones could be sticky. Um, and the finish looks good. Um, I, there's one tiny little finish imperfection there. And I can feel a little one here. Looks like maybe a little bit of dust or something got touched there. But other than that, I do not see any flaws in this finish. It looks really good. Now that we've taken a look at the instrument, let's go ahead and look at all the things that come in the accessories bag. All right, so as I said, this comes in its own nifty little bag. And for starters here, it has a, a banjo user's guidebook. And that's nice, because if you're brand new to banjo, um, I mean, it's got hardware and, and uh, it's got some, uh, some mechanical things going on you need to know about. And that looks pretty nice. Okay, it comes with, uh, looks like a, a Van Gogh branded uh, tuning or tuner, rather. It comes with a spare set of banjo strings. Again, Van Gogh are branded. As I understand it, these are, are a set of light strings. Okay, it comes with, looks like uh, three picks. It comes with an Allen key for adjusting the truss rod. And it comes with this uh, special tool here, a wrench, for adjusting the hardware on the, uh, the banjo body. Oh, nice. It also comes with a Van Gogh branded piezo pickup. So if the banjo is not loud enough for you, you can plug it in nicely. It comes with a cleaning cloth. And it also comes with a, a shoulder strap. Again, with the little um, snaps here for hooking onto those little, little triangular um, uh, attachment points. In addition to the metal uh, picks, it also comes with some plastic Van Gogh branded picks. 
So it looks like you have everything a raw beginner would need to get started. So let's go ahead and tune it up and see what it sounds like. As you can see, I now have it uh, tuned up. And I should say that using the uh, this little uh, setup guide uh, was a breeze. I did use it and it was no trouble at all. Um, I then went ahead and brought it to pitch and right now I have it tuned uh, G, D, G, B, E or Chicago tuning. Many folks tune these G, D, G, B, D, which is an open tuning, but I'm not used to playing that tuning so I tuned it like Chicago tuning. Interestingly, the strings on the package here on the back, they have the gauges, and the gauges for these strings are, uh, let's see, looks like they are a 9, a 26, a 16, an 11, and a 9. And they have, um, uh, on the package here, they said for the tuning of G, B, G, D, D. And I've not seen that tuning. Um, but anyway, you can tune it any way you want. But I tuned it up to G, D, G, B, E with no trouble. Now, I was playing around with it a bit. And, uh, and I checked the string action, and I was going up and down the neck, and I was getting some buzzing. And I was listening, but the buzzing wasn't coming from the neck. It was coming from something here in the body that was buzzing on certain notes. And then I realized that some of the hardware on this was loose. And so I took the, uh, the little wrench here and went around and kind of snugged up any of those that were like really loose. And just, I didn't squeeze them all tight because you can use that to kind of tune the head, which I did not try to do. I basically just brought it up to a, so that these things weren't, weren't loose. Um, and that essentially took care of that, that sort of sympathetic buzzing that was going on. But I did not find any buzzing coming from the strings. I did use my uh, string action guide here to measure the string action. And uh, I'll go ahead and do it again right now for you. I'm looking at the 12th fret, and the G string looks like it's just about two millimeters. Uh, and that's the, the fifth string. The fourth string is, uh, let's see, looks just about 2.75 millimeters. Um, looks like it's about three, I guess, for the third. Let me get that in the right light here. Yeah, three millimeters for the fourth and three millimeters for the, I'm sorry, try that again. Yeah, it's about, no, here we go. No, it's about three millimeters. It's about three millimeters for the uh, fourth through the first string and that fifth string, the, the high G, looks like it's about, let me get the right position here. It's about 2.25, had to get it in the right light. So it's a playable action that can be adjusted. Adjusting the action on banjo is a little trickier because sometimes you have to adjust the coordinator rod and or the, 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 uh, the tension because the tension on the drum can affect the action as well. But I'm just gonna go ahead and play this as it is uh, so you get to see what it sounds like. Now I should say that I don't play uh, Scruggs style banjo, uh, which is kind of finger picking kind of thing. And I don't play sort of claw hammer either. Again, I usually play it with uh, Chicago tuning. So let me play something here for you. this is plenty loud. I know people have resonators for these to make them even louder. I don't do that. Now, if I play this at home, I usually put a sock underneath of the, uh, or between the coordinator rod and the drum head to quiet it down a bit. Let me go ahead and play it now with some uh, finger picking, just using some uh, Travis picking patterns. Thank you. 
So there you go, some picking and some strumming. So overall, I can say this is a pretty nice instrument. As you can see, it's made of a nice uh, piece of maple, no particular flame to it, but it looks nice. It's very well built. The overall finish is great, with the exception of I found two little minor sort of finished flaws in the neck that you can kind of feel, but they're no bother. Uh, the frets are well done, there are no sharp frets, it has a bound fretboard, and it's a nice little instrument. As I said, this instrument comes in two different versions. One is with this sort of a, a, uh, a what's called a Renaissance head, which is a little bit of, a, of a, a softer white, as opposed to the frosted head or, or drum head, which is a very, very bright white. As you can see, I also have the, uh, the strap put on here, which went on with no trouble. If you don't like that sort of sound, you can always take these straps and just put them right onto one of the other pieces of hardware. So if you're looking for a five string open backed banjo for, to play some old time music or even some, you know, modern music as well, this is certainly one to look at. It's a decent, that's a decent banjo. I hope you found today's review of this uh, Van Gogh banjo helpful. If you have, please give a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more instrument reviews that I do as well as the instruments that I build, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.